What do you get if you take a pissed off, unpredictable demigod on an adventure fueled by vengeance and throw in epic battles against figures from Greek and Norse mythology? You get one hell of a gaming franchise. That's what. Hold on to your loincloth, because this is the evolution of God of War. Following the success of their futuristic racing game Kinetica in 2002, Santa Monica Studios began developing a new title using the same game engine. It was to be called God of War. The game's director and creator David Jaff revealed that he had been inspired by Capcom's title Animusha a game which retells Japanese history using historical figures and supernatural elements, and said, let's do that with Greek history. Other inspirations for God of War included the 1981 feature films Clash of the Titans and Raiders of the Lost Ark, plus an American science fiction and fantasy comics magazine called Heavy Metal. While taking characters and themes from Greek mythology to begin with, the development team at Santa Monica allowed themselves lots of creative freedom, and simply looked to incorporate the coolest aspects of the subject to make for the most entertaining experience. Lead concept artist Charlie Wen drew inspiration from the 1981 movies as well as more modern films like 2000's Gladiator for the visual design of characters and the game's setting. Gameplay, on the other hand, was heavily influenced by the Strider Arcade franchise, another hack and slash game from Capcom. God of War was first unveiled at Sony America's Santa Monica Gamers Day in 2004. In an interview with GameSpot at E3 that same year, developers described it as merging the action of Devil May Cry with the puzzle solving of Ico. They also promised that players would be able to sunder enemies with a single move, such as by ripping them in half. Following the teasers, it's fair to say gamers were pretty hyped for the release of God of War at least if they owned a PlayStation 2 anyway, as the Sony-published title was to be a PlayStation exclusive. On March 22, 2005, the game was officially released, and all hell broke loose. Enter Kratos, a demigod with superhuman strength and abilities who was once a fierce Spartan warrior. Mainly through flashbacks, it is revealed that in battle against the barbarians, Kratos offered his life and service to Ares, the god of war, in return for victory. Sensing Kratos' formidable power, Ares accepted and bestowed upon Kratos the Blades of Chaos. Curved blades forged in the pits of Hades that became fused to Kratos' arms by long chains. Following the battle, Kratos became a servant to Ares and led his Spartan army to conquer much of Greece. However, in one village, Ares put Kratos into a rage, ensuring he killed anyone in his path. Shockingly, the last two victims of Kratos' bloodlust turned out to be his own wife and daughter. Ares explained that this was a test of the Spartans' power and severed his final ties to humanity. The oracle of the village destroyed by Kratos cursed our protagonist, binding the ashes of his dead family to his skin, making it pale and giving Kratos a new moniker, the Ghost of Sparta. Kratos renounced his service to Ares and began wandering the earth, feared by others, and seeking the service of other gods to redeem himself and seek vengeance against Ares. Ares, you will die for what you did that night. And from then on, it was up to the player to take control of Kratos and complete his mission. How about that for the best introduction to a game ever? With gameplay that focused on bloody combat and puzzle solving, gamers strapped in for an awesome ride. Using an array of weapons and superhuman powers to fight multiple enemies brought to life from Greek mythology. Many battles involved a minigame, where precise button presses, analog spins, or button mashing is used to defeat enemies with a gruesome special kill. Red experience orbs spread throughout the game enabled Kratos to level up his weapons and powers while Gorgon Eyes and Phoenix Feathers increased his overall health and magic, respectively. Many of the weapons and powers in-game allude to Greek myths, like the Blade of Artemis or Medusa's Gaze. 
Movie-like presentation in a story mode that switched seamlessly from FMV sequences to gameplay and back were revolutionary, with load times masked by having the player traverse a long, often featureless area. Quite rightly, God of War received very positive reviews, and many people consider it to be among the greatest PlayStation 2 games ever. One review from CNN stated that it was the type of game that makes you remember why you play games in the first place. Metacritic recorded a very impressive score of 94, and it was also a commercial success with 4.6 million copies sold. Fun fact, upon completion of the game, players gained access to a graveyard containing character models that were rejected. Some of them are enemies and others are of Kratos himself. A few of them even have notes from the developers to explain why they were rejected. The Cyclops, in particular, has many binned versions, and it is revealed they were originally going to be naked. Thankfully, at least one eye was covered up in the end product. Interestingly, the first title in the God of War series was supposed to be its own self-contained story. After its success, the sequels were made to be more interconnected. This is why there are some inconsistencies in the franchise's lore, and why some of the events of the first game are no longer considered canon. You conspire against me! That said, God of War 2 was still a sequel and picked up the plot 13 in-game years after the first game ended. Spoiler alert, by defeating Ares, Kratos, the once mortal warrior, became the new God of War. However, Kratos soon found himself alone in Olympus, shunned by his fellow gods. By defeating Ares, Kratos, the once mortal warrior, became the new God of War. However, Kratos soon found himself alone on Olympus, shunned by his fellow gods. The second entry into this much-loved action-adventure series was released in March 2007. The North American version was packaged in a two-disc set, one disc for the actual game and the other containing information about God of War 2's development, including a diary of the game's production. European and Australian versions offered a special edition with similar content. Vengeance was once again the game's central theme, although this time it was the almighty Zeus who had betrayed Kratos by killing him, stripping him of his godliness, and sending him to the underworld. However, Kratos is saved by the titan Gaia, who instructs him to find the Sisters of Fate, for they will allow him to travel back in time and take revenge on Zeus. The gameplay of God of War 2 did not change much from the first outing. The combination of combat, platforming, and puzzle game elements is continued, as are the minigames used to perform bloody kills. Red orbs, Gorgon eyes, and Phoenix feathers all returned, though some of the items obtained by Kratos throughout the game are different. In God of War 2, these include Icarus's wings, an item cut from the original game that allows players to glide short distances, plus the Golden Fleece, which allows players to repel projectiles. Just like the first game, God of War 2 received fantastic reviews, scoring 93 out of 100 from Metacritic. Chris Roper of IGN called it one of gaming's most intense and engaging experiences available, and defended the fact that the mechanics hadn't changed much, saying it was for good reason, as it was already perfect the first time out. Among God of War 2's accolades were a golden joystick for PlayStation Game of the Year 2007, presented at the 2007 Golden Joystick Awards. The sequel sold almost as many copies as the original game, totaling 4.2 million copies worldwide. Fun fact, the boat captain is an unfortunate recurring character in the God of War franchise. Kratos lets him fall to his death in the original title, and in the sequel, Kratos kills the captain when he is summoned as a soul by the Barbarian King. Humorous references to the captain can be found in later titles too, but it's arguably his appearance in God of War 2 that is the funniest, especially if you're a fan of dark humor. One of the most obscure games in the God of War series is God of War Betrayal, a mobile game that also came out in 2007. Acting as a prequel to God of War 2, 
The 2D side-scrollers saw Kratos blamed for the murder of a giant named Argos. The player, as Kratos, is tasked with hunting down the actual assassin in order to clear his name. Bizarrely though, the game never ends up revealing the assassin's identity as they escape and Kratos realizes his actions have further alienated the gods and likely angered Zeus. Betrayal is the only God of War title to date not released for the PlayStation. It was well received by critics though for adapting the main gameplay characteristics properly. It even received awards for Best Wireless Platform Game. In 2008, the first God of War game for the PlayStation Portable was released, titled God of War Chains of Olympus. It was developed by Dawn Studios and served as a prequel to the original 2005 game. It followed events during the 10-year period in which Kratos served the gods of Olympus. Kratos is tasked with completing several goals so that he may achieve redemption for the nightmares that haunt him. With gameplay elements essentially the same as those seen in the console releases, Chains of Olympus served as an incredible option for those wanting to play God of War on the go. The game received a score of 91, making it the highest rated PSP game on Metacritic. Chains of Olympus was later remastered to be included in both the 2011 God of War Origins Collection and 2012's God of War Saga for the PlayStation 3. Your suffering will never end, Ghost of Sparta. My vengeance ends now. Speaking of which, the first God of War title to come out on PS3 was, appropriately, God of War 3. It was released in March 2010 and later remastered in 2015 to be playable on the PS4. It carried on from the plot of God of War 2 after Kratos was betrayed at the hands of Zeus, who, by the way, turns out to be Kratos' dad. Kratos ascends Mount Olympus, but is abandoned by the Titan Gaia. Controlling Kratos, the player must battle monsters, gods, and titans while guided by Athena's spirit, find Pandora's box, and open it to defeat Zeus, and take some sweet revenge. In terms of gameplay, it was another case of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it for the third main installment. One interesting element that was added, though, was godly possessions. In addition to relics, such as Icarus's wings and the Golden Fleece, Godly possessions were hidden throughout the game, to be found and used at any time during a second playthrough. There were 10 godly possessions in total, including Poseidon's conch shell, which granted the player infinite magic, Hercules's shoulder guar, which decreased damage taken by a third, and Hermes's coin, allowing the player to collect 10 times the amount of red orbs. While useful, once a godly possession was activated, a player could no longer receive PlayStation trophies for that playthrough. As expected, God of War 3 performed just as well as its predecessors, garnering universal acclaim and scoring 92 out of 100 on Metacritic. Reviewer Nathan Deedham summed things up by saying, the game is inches away from scoring 10 of 10. It's only the familiarity of the core gameplay that makes it feel less than the very, very best. But it's definitely the biggest and if this is the finale, then God of War 3 gives PlayStation's toughest hero the send-off he deserves. Surprisingly for a sequel, God of War 3 outsold its predecessors by hitting over 5 million copies in worldwide sales. Fun fact, God of War 3 won multiple times at the 2010 Spike Video Game Awards. While Best PS3 Game and Best Graphics were great acknowledgments, Kratos received his own special award for Biggest Badass. I certainly can't think of a video game character more deserving of it. Can you? In November of 2010, a second game was developed by Ready at Dawn and released for the PSP titled God of War Ghost of Sparta. With a storyline that took place between God of War and God of War 2, it followed Kratos as he visited the long-lost city of Atlantis, revealing further details about his past along the way. In the game, the player learns that Kratos' long-lost mother and brother Deimos are alive. Once again, the game was admired by critics, with IGN awarding it a 9.5 out of 10, 
and pointing out that there's nothing unique here, but that's not a bad thing. Eurogamer only gave it a 7 out of 10, though, claiming that Ghost of Sparta is a step back for the series if you've played the PlayStation 3 game. Overall, Metacritic measured a score of 86, and Ghost of Sparta went on to win several awards, including Best Handheld Game, Best PSP Game, and PSP Game of Show at E3. It ended up selling around 1.2 million copies worldwide, making it the 15th best-selling PlayStation Portable game. Fun fact, Ghost of Sparta confirmed an old mystery in the God of War series concerning the identity of the Gravedigger. In the original game, the Gravedigger saved Kratos by digging a grave that reached through to hell. This led to theories that the character could be a god in disguise, possibly Zeus or Hermes. The theory was confirmed in the unlockable combat arena of Ghost of Sparta, where you can play as the Gravedigger who, once selected, transforms into Zeus and wields both the Blade of Olympus and the Gauntlet of Zeus. In March 2013, God of War Ascension was released as the seventh installment in the God of War series, playable on the PlayStation 3. In terms of its plot, Ascension serves as the first chapter, taking place before Kratos' reign as the God of War, roughly six months after the unintentional killing of his wife and daughter. Flashbacks are again used to aid the timeline, which follows Kratos' allegiance to Ares, and the events that occur happen 10 years before those in the first game. Marketing material claimed that Ascension was the most ambitious God of War adventure in the series so far, and the most notable addition was a new online multiplayer mode. In it, players could play cooperatively or competitively. Up to eight players on two teams could battle for control of a map in a deathmatch style to earn rewards from the gods. One-on-one -on -one matches were also available. Players could sell their champion soul to either Zeus, Hades, Ares, or Poseidon, enabling them to try different weapons, armor sets, and powers inspired by the god of their choice. While God of War Ascension received generally favorable reviews, it was the lowest ranked title of the series to date, with a score of 80. The fundamental gameplay and spectacle were deemed great, but the lack of new ideas and a mixed response to the multiplayer mode dragged the overall score down. Sales numbers also dipped to just over 3 million copies, and despite several nominations, Ascension failed to pick up any awards. Santa Monica Studio was tired of using the same God of War format repeatedly. To make things worse, after God of War Ascension, they asked fans of the series what they thought of God of War, and many told harshly that they were done with Kratos. He either needed to go away or get a fresh start. So the studio decided to reinvent the franchise. However, this wasn't as easy as it sounds. To create the reboot, they brought back Cory Barlog, a lead figure for the early God of War games, and this time he would be the director of the game. Originally the place was going to be Egypt, which of course could also be a very interesting setting. Kratos killing Egyptian gods? Yeah, I'd love to see that. Eventually, they decided it was worth the risk, and Atreus was added to the story. In this story, Kratos wasn't just an angry version of himself, like he was in the previous games. This time, the studio wanted a well-thought-out story. Kratos helps his son as a mentor, while Atreus helps Kratos become a father. The team also decided to hire a new voice actor for Kratos, and eventually, they found the perfect match, Christopher Judge. My agent had called me, and, and I wasn't really sold on auditioning for it. I know it sounds silly now. When Christopher read the script, he envisioned a movie. He just couldn't believe all of it was for a video game. That's exactly what I am. Not to me! And it, it just, I, I couldn't wrap my head around how this would be in a video game. Christopher also brought some humor to the set. Have you missed me? No, not really. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Yeah. Come on, man. It's okay. It's, it's okay to love, dog. You gotta, you know, don't forget that. It's okay to love. Love is first. Followed closely by hate and divorce and alimony. <laughs> the 
those are the things we teach kids on set. Apparently, Kratos also loves to make dad jokes. What do you call a blind deer? No idea. <laughs> I don't trust stairs. They are always up to something. Fun fact, Terrence Connor Carson, better known as T.C. Carson, had voiced Kratos in almost every God of War game. But for God of War in 2018, he was replaced by Christopher Judge. What was the reason? Apparently, Carson wasn't tall enough to portray Kratos for motion capture. Sadly, he wasn't even told he'd been replaced. Maybe they were just trying to get him to channel his rage for the next game. Boy. Or not, seeing as how Christopher Judge is known to have returned for the role. And the rage takes you. That is me in your blood. Eating away at any goodness your mother may have passed on to you. The team grew bigger and bigger, and eventually the game was made with over 300 people, including Danielle Basuti, who plays the Norse goddess Freya in the game. Funnily enough, she thought she was auditioning for Game of Thrones. I thought I was auditioning for Game of Thrones, I'm gonna be honest. I was pulling on a major Lady Stark moment with my monologue, and I was like, this is my moment. <laughs> Musicians also played an important role in making the game as epic as possible. Bear McCreary, an Emmy-winning musician, composed the music for God of War. And at the last minute I was like, It's so simple that I almost wrote it by accident. It was the last thing I did in sketching that theme. But I mean, I've come to really love it. And it's, I think it's simplicity is, is what makes it so powerful. And, and it represents Kratos. He's a man of few words. His theme should be a theme of few notes. At E3 2016, it was the first time the team showcased what they'd been working on for years. What for? A test. She taught you to hunt, yes? Yes, sir. Then show me what you know. I am hunting. Ah! 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 Feed us. Ah! That was straight up paralyzing. I, I was literally paralyzed, full chills, entire body. They just hoped people would be happy with the changes they made. And it's an understatement to say people were excited. You know, but the scary thing was, like, we showed 10 minutes and 45 seconds or something, and it took a year and a half to get there. And now we have a year and a half left, essentially. Now it dawned on the team that they had to deliver a game that was as amazing as the demo. They were worried that the team didn't have enough time to make the rest of the game as epic as the demo. Doubts began growing as the release date approached. So much had to be done and there was so little time. Like we are literally all in on this game. You have to get 150 people who are very stubborn and passionate and creative to all see a similar picture that doesn't exist. And doubt is the demon that lives in the ear of every person in this industry. The team really put their hearts and souls into the game, as is seen here as Christopher sheds a tear. You will always be a monster. I know. Before God of War was released, a text-based game playable through Facebook Messenger appeared called God of War, a call from the wilds in 2018. It turned out to be a collaboration between Sony and Facebook to promote the upcoming God of War game for the PS4. Featuring a short story that follows Kratos' son Atreus on his first adventure in the Norse wilds. Atreus hears the voice of a dying deer and finds it covered in blood. Then suddenly, some draugers appear. Atreus attempts to fight them, but he is injured. Guess who comes to the rescue? Kratos. Kratos and his son then battle a revenant before returning home. The end. 
completing a call from the wild's unlocked downloadable concept art. If nothing else, it served as an interesting teaser for the PS4 game. Named simply God of War, the eighth installment of the franchise was a reimagining of the series. Instead of focusing on Greek mythology, there was a switch to Norse mythology, with most of the stories set in ancient Scandinavia in the realm of Midgard. After five years since the previous main installment of the God of War franchise, it was finally time for a new skull-smashing adventure. When on April 20th, 2018, God of War was released. Initially, the game was released exclusively for the PlayStation 4, but four years later, in 2022, the game was also playable on Windows PCs. Events in-game are still said to take place after those in God of War 3, though many years have passed and Kratos is visibly much older. And of course, aside from the mythologies, another major change was the addition of Kratos' son, Atreus, which meant that there was now two protagonists for the first time. After taking vengeance and surviving the final encounter with Zeus, Kratos finds himself living with his son in ancient Norway. It is a savage land inhabited by ferocious beasts and warriors. Kratos' second wife, Faye, has recently died, and as per her wishes, father and son must take her ashes to the highest peak of the Nine Realms. Along the way, the duo comes into conflict with monsters and gods of the Norse world. In order to teach his son how to survive in this harsh environment, Kratos must channel his rage and power into the toughest assignment of all, fatherhood. Close your heart to it. Come then, we have a long journey. To match the new setting, several changes were made to gameplay and visuals. Kratos uses a magical battle axe instead of his signature double-chained blades. This axe, called the Leviathan Axe, is infused with ice elemental magic. The axe can be thrown at enemies and magically summoned back to his hand. Spoiler alert, when Atreus falls sick and Kratos hopes Freya can revive him, she tells him she can't do that by herself. Kratos needs to go to Helheim and collect the heart of the bridge keeper there. There is a rare ingredient found only in Helheim, the keeper that protects the Bridge of the Damned. I need its heart. <laughs> However, his Leviathan Axe's frost powers won't do much damage in Helheim, therefore he must arm himself with another weapon, which are, of course, the Blades of Chaos. Longtime fans of the franchise will no doubt feel right at home when Kratos straps the chains around his arms. You will always be a monster. I know. But I am your monster no longer. The Blades of Chaos have five levels, which allow players to perform new combos and do increased damage. Just like the Leviathan Axe, the Blades also have a skills tree. Oh man, you've no idea how glad I was when I could finally use these Blades again after so many years. Even though combo-based combat and puzzle game elements are still in the game, the gameplay is vastly different from previous games, as it was completely rebuilt. Just as in previous games, there is also a Rage ability called Spartan Rage. This time, however, it has a meter that gradually fills during combat. When using Spartan Rage, Kratos uses his bare hand to do powerful attacks. Meanwhile, an over-the-shoulder free camera is used to see the action, as opposed to the fixed cinematic camera of the previous entries. The game is presented in a continuous shot, with no camera cuts or loading screens, which makes the game much more immersive. The game also features RPG elements, such as the ability to craft resources to create new or upgraded armor. There are also experience points which are used to learn new combat skills while exploring the gorgeous world. Players can also find chests that contain items as well as hack silver currency, which can be used for crafting and purchasing new items. Two special items, Eodin Apples and Horns of Blood Mead, increase the maximum length of the health and rage meters, respectively. Besides a health meter above the enemy's heads, there's also a stun meter. When it is full, 
a grab prompt appears. This allows Kratos to wreak havoc and, depending on the enemies, do multiple attacks, including ripping an enemy in half. Many of the development team from Santa Monica Studios who worked on the original God of War game also worked on this title and designed it to be both accessible and grounded. The result was a remarkable return to form, with Metacritic recording a critically acclaimed 94 out of 100, making it the highest rated God of War title together with the first game of the series. While the gameplay and graphics received high praise, the story and cast also won people over. Peter Brown of GameSpot called the characters strong, convincing, and oddly enchanting. GamesRadar agreed and called God of War one of the PlayStation's finest moments. Kratos has been reimagined for a new audience while keeping the best bits of what originally made him great. Guardian was also impressed by the technological improvements and said it's rare to play a game so accomplished in everything it sets out to do. God of War is a standard setter both technologically and narratively. It is a game that, until recently, would have been impossible. Many reviewers felt it had successfully revitalized the series without losing the core identity of its predecessors. IGN gave God of War a perfect score, and confirmed this in their review by saying, I expected great action from God of War, and it delivers that handily. But I didn't expect it to be a thrilling journey, in which every aspect of it complements the others, to form what is nothing short of a masterpiece. Gameron, who gave the game a 10 out of 10, said, quote, The best comparison to be made is that Sony Santa Monica took a blockbuster popcorn action flick and made it an Oscar contender, without sacrificing any of the series' central DNA. God of War is one of this generation's crowning achievements, and it is up there with some of Sony's best. Countless more reviewers highly praised the game, but I think God as a Geek summed it up pretty nicely. One of the best games on PS4 and one of the best games of this generation, a masterpiece. It was no surprise that God of War picked up Game of the Year awards from numerous publications. All right, and the Game Award for Game of the Year goes to God of War. The game became a massive commercial success and has already sold over 20 million copies. This is more than all sales of all the previous God of War games combined. The only downside was that gamers had to wait a while for another sequel, although that wait is finally over. Fun fact, Kratos is a big guy, but just how tall is he? According to the developer at Santa Monica Studios, his height varies between the games and comic books. In comics, he's a lofty 7 foot 6 inches, or 2.3 meters. Whereas in game, he's around 6 foot 4 inches or 1.8 meters. Either way, I suppose it's not really his height that's the most intimidating thing about Kratos. As any good game should, God of War 2018 left players wanting more. Game director Corey Barlog had already confirmed that a sequel would take place in a Norse setting, and a secret ending to the 2018 game showed a vision of Thor confronting Kratos and his son. One year later, to celebrate the first anniversary of the previous game, Barlog posted a series of tweets on Twitter with pictures and comments about the development of God of War 5, which at that point was still untitled. Some eagle-eyed fans noticed that the first letter of Barlog's tweets spelled out the phrase, Ragnarok is coming. Unfortunately, fans would have to wait longer than expected to get their hands on the next installment. When you are at your weakest. In fear and doubt are a burden too heavy to bear. Originally scheduled for release in 2021, God of War Ragnarok was delayed due to both the pandemic and Christopher Judge's health problems. But finally, on the 9th of November 2022, God of War Ragnarok was released for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. As suggested by its title, the game centers around a series of events known as Ragnarok, 
which in Norse mythology brings about the end of days and depicts the deaths of some of the major gods. The event was foretold in the previous game after Kratos killed the Norse god Baldur. Chronologically, Ragnarok picks up approximately three years after the previous title and serves as both a sequel and a finale to the Norse era of God of War. As Fimble Winter draws to a close, Kratos and his now teenage son Atreus must traverse the Nine Realms to seek out a way of preventing Ragnarok. At the same time, they seek answers to Atreus's true identity. The duo encounter many Norse gods, though their main conflict lies with Thor, the god of thunder, who seeks revenge following the deaths of his half-brother Baldur and two sons, Modi and Magni. Freya, Baldur's mother, also makes an appearance, as does the all-father of the Norse gods, Odin. Ragnarok's gameplay is similar to the 2018 title, although there are many more enemy types and many boss battles that add depth and variety. Kratos is equipped with the Leviathan Axe, in addition to his iconic double-chained blades, which can now be used like a grappling hook. Weapon signature moves allow Kratos to infuse each weapon with elemental powers, such as ice and fire, and to unleash powerful elemental attacks. He can also carry one of several different shields, the mechanics of which have been revamped for Ragnarok to make them more versatile in combat. As in the previous game, Atreus helps his father in combat, in addition to traversal, exploration, and puzzle solving. The player can passively control Atreus by dictating where he fires his arrows with his talon bow, as well as choosing which magical spectral animals he can summon to further help with combat. Role-playing elements return in Ragnarok, and players can find crafting resources to create new armor or upgrade existing armor with better perks. The addition of armor transmogrification now means the player can change their appearance without losing any of the equipped armor's stats. The critical response to God of War Ragnarok has so far been outstanding, with reviewers awarding a score of 94 out of 100, according to Metacritic. Gameront gave the game a perfect score and said God of War Ragnarok is a once-in-a-generation game. Gaming Trend were also very impressed. It's rare to see a sequel nail it this hard. But God of War Ragnarok has once again raised the bar for every action-adventure title. It's the best game I've played in a very, very long time and is, in a word, perfect. IGN gave the game a 10 out of 10 and said in their review, God of War Ragnarok is an almighty achievement and creates a new high that makes many of its peers look mortal by comparison. Upon the game's release, Sony announced that it expects sales of God of War Ragnarok to at least match that of God of War 2018, which is mighty impressive considering the PS5 supply issues and economic situation around the world right now. Still, nothing's going to stop me getting my hands on a copy of the game. How about you? Is Ragnarok the best title in the God of War series? Thanks for watching.